Well, welcome back to Golden Rust or Bust. I'm your host, John Behrens, and I'm here today with my uh, cousin, Eric. How's it going? And uh, today, we're going to be working on this wonderful machine right here. It is a 1978 Polaris Cobra 440. I mean, you can kind of, I don't want to mess up the paint here, but you see the little Cobra symbol there. Yeah, so I got this thing for free. Um, I didn't pay a single dime for this. It comes with all the pieces, also another basket case. So we're going to see if we can put this thing together. So this thing came as a basket case. We're gonna see if we can put this thing together. Right now, it does not have the track underneath it. The track's right there. Pretty sure that I got the uh, undercarriage to go underneath it. Um, there's something wrong with my undercarriage. I need to go and check out my undercarriage. I think that I got something missing from my undercarriage and I really need somebody else to also go and check my undercarriage. But anyways, um, this thing, Right here, haven't checked if it's free turning or not. It came out of a barn right outside Walcott, Iowa. So they came from a barn. I want to see if it turns over. Oh, sh she's a little. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, well, she turns over. Let's see, uh, just right off the bat, if she has any pop in her. Got some parts cleaner here. Everyone's saying, Oh my god, you need to put oil in the cylinders, otherwise it scores the cylinder. Shut the f up, I don't give a shit. We're gonna put a little, little juice down in her. That should be enough. This thing hasn't run since 93, 94. So it's been a little while. Another reason why I'm testing this out is if I don't have anything, then I'm gonna check for spark. And if I don't have spark, and that's another issue. All right, so I got some schnuff in the old girl. Let's see if we can get this thing to fire up. You on? All right, well, we didn't get her to pop off, so I'm assuming that I ain't got no spark. All right, well, I realize that I don't have the parts or the tools that I need down here. So we're just gonna drag this old piece of shit up the road, up to the parents' house, where I can leave it in their garage and make them all mad. Ugh. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it on that trailer over there. We're gonna get the gator, we're gonna take this thing up the hill. Not only that, we're gonna give it a bath because it's absolutely filthy dirty. And uh, yeah, is the seat attached? Nope, we'll, we'll handle that at a different time. Or we just duct tape it down. Whatever comes first or second or third. So, uh, no oh gosh. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, there we go, okay. So we gotta put this on that trailer and then we gotta take the parts that came with it, put it on the trailer, haul it up the hill, make my dad upset because there's just another snowmobile in his garage. That makes number three. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna work on it from there. She's in okay shape. I mean, she, what do you think, Eric? What, what do you think, Eric? What do you, what do you what think a, of her? What, about it? Yeah. What I do you think mean? it's cool looking. You think it's cool looking? Yeah. It's only got one headlight. Yeah? So how are you supposed to see? With the one headlight. It's a little dirty. Yeah, she, I mean, she is a little dirty. Like a lot dirty. She's been sitting for a couple the decades. Seat, the seat's not attached. But it's in good shape. It is in good shape. There's no cracking or anything. Yeah. What's this green shit? Uh, I think it's rat poison. Oh. Yeah, it kind of looks like cotton candy. Yeah, go ahead and take a take a, take a eat of that. No, I think it's a good looking machine. All right. Well, we're gonna get this thing on there, and then we're gonna get we all gonna the parts. That? We're gonna lift it. <laughs> You're gonna put it on there, actually. 
right. You remember when you said you were going to help me today? I'm the cameraman. <laughs> The antenna could have. That was pretty close. Could have gave you another cut yeah. on your. No shit. That was, <laughs> that was too close for fucking comfort. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we got the piece of junk up there. Uh, we're gonna throw on all the parts and everything and take her up the hill. All right. So we got one snowmobile, two snowmobile, three snowmobile, four snowmobile in the garage. Mom's brand new 2023. Uh, Chevy or GMC is sitting outside. Um, she's not going to be too happy about that. Finally got this thing off the trailer. I'm sorry if it's loud. We got a heater going in here. So I'm going to take those spark plugs out, pull it through, and see if we have spark. All right, so break these things loose. have spark if i don't have spark i'm definitely going to have to go through the uh points this is a points machine so uh pull them out and first see what they look like okay well i got these uh spark plugs wire wheeled up i got them out i'm going to pull it through and see if we have spark on any of them i can hear spark that's the only one so i don't have spark on the other problem child okay well first before i do that I'm gonna take this, put a different spark plug in it, because these sometimes like to foul and they like to spark between the uh, insulin, or not insulin is. <laughs> Got diabetes? <laughs> this spark plug has diabetes! Insulator and the outer jacket. So <laughs> I'm gonna go and put a new spark plug in this and see if it changes anything. All right, so I got a new spark plug. I'm gonna hold it here. Attempt to pull it through with one hand and see if we have spark. I can hear the other one sparking. Oh, come on. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to pull it through fast enough. Okay, I can hear the other one sparking. So I'm thinking that this cylinder here doesn't have spark, which means I'm going to have to take all this stuff off, get behind there, file the points, and get this one sparking because I'm pretty sure that the points have got corrosion on them and therefore it's never making contact and breaking contact. Once I do that, I already checked out my lines. It looks like somebody sometime put new lines on this and put new lines in the tank. So, so once I get them both sparking, I'm gonna put gas in this machine and see if we can get this thing to come alive. All right, so I took apart the front here, took my flywheel off filed the points and I want to see if we have spark. So uh, I'm going to pull it through and I can hear him spark. Let's see if you can get up there. Let's see if you can see him spark. Oh, oh yeah. All right, so now that I got spark, I'm going to just put some gas in this thing and see if I can get this thing to fire up and run. So it's pretty cool. We've got spark going. I'm going to get it running. And then once I get it running and know that it's a dependable machine or at least know that it runs, I'm gonna put everything else underneath it. I'm gonna wash the machine and uh, pretty much get her going for us. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Well, I'm mixing up my gas for the uh, old Cobra and today's 
Mystery Oil is brought to you by R Wins. Wins Racing Formula Snowmobile Oil. Uh, SAE 40 modified. Uh, I mean, this thing, this thing looks like it's perfect. Just ready to go. So uh, I'm gonna put my Wins. I don't even know how you pronounce that. Wins. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in this can and uh, get some gas ready for this thing. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, we got most of the gas in there. Uh, I put some, uh, put some stuff down its throat here, so we'll, uh, we'll see if we can pull her through and get her to fire up. So I'm back. It's the next day. Uh, got a, got pretty far on it last night. My phone died, so I stopped recording. But uh, when I got the track up under, I uh, got the spindle in, or the, whatever you want to call it. Got the bearing done on this side of the machine. So that's in. What I need to do now is go through the track system here and inspect everything. Probably clean up that shock. Uh, where the tip of my finger is so when it gets bounced on the seal doesn't get completely blown out So fun fact I was working on this one last night because I thought this one was the one that I needed to have for the machine Well, it turns out I was wrong And I needed to be working on this one So I had to take the bearing that I put in already on that one out and put it into this one here I need to take that top bearing out and put a new bearing in there. The good thing is, is this is already somewhat torn apart. So it should be pretty easy. Um, so I guess that's where we're at now. So I gotta take this apart and take those two bearings out and take that bearing out there. Then once I do that, I should be able to just put everything back together on it after I clean it, of course, and put it back in the sled. Still haven't washed it yet. Wanted to do that today when I had daylight. It currently snowed last night. So hopefully I can get the snowmobile done today and I'll be able to uh, ride it out on the snow for the first time in how, however long. Um, sorry I didn't record. It just was a really lengthy process and a lot of the stuff you probably didn't want to see anyways. So um, I'll be uh, working on this and yeah stay tuned as you can see here i got the drivetrain you know completely torn apart um i got it completely torn apart i got my two new bearings in my correct in my correct uh chain box so the reason why it has to sit up is because that'll fall out uh but got my brake torn apart uh these are the two old bearings 
which uh, they don't sound that bad. I mean, honestly, they probably would have been okay, but since everything's torn apart, it was just easiest to uh, take everything out, take everything apart, and put new in. We can probably save these bearings for another project, um, maybe another project that's just going to stay around here. Since I'm going up north with the boys, I want to make sure that my sled is just ready to go completely good with all the bearings and everything else so we don't have a major malfunction or a major breakdown when we're out there on the snow. So that's why I'm putting new bearings and everything. So now that I got new bearings here, I'm gonna be putting my new bearings in that place right there. And then another one needs to go on the shaft. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. Um, don't mind me, I'm just gonna snap forward until it's all done. And just like that, everything's put together. I got my brakes done, I got the uh, clutch part done, I got my chains done. Uh, it's just ready for this thing to go back in the sled, pretty much hook up everything else, throw the track under, and see if this thing will move under its own power. All right, so we got the ass end of the snowmobile up in the air completely. I got my chain case in, got my chain hooked up pretty tight, got my uh, sprockets on both ends. So now when I spin this, well, you can see that it moves the track at least. So when that's tight, it'll at least move the track. Got my sprocket up in there, new bearing on the other side. It needs chain case oil put into the chain case and uh, needs a couple other things. I'm gonna hook up my brakes and see if I can get my brakes to work. That means I need to take this off here, add brake fluid. So yeah, I'm gonna put fluid in there, see if we have any leaks. Hopefully we don't because that would be a big pain in the ass to take everything back apart to put all everything new in. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to get to it. I already got my brakes bled. So if you see right here, that's your top bleeder. So when you're bleeding your brakes up here on up here where my finger is, that's pretty much like your master cylinder in the car. Here's your plunger, and then when you plunge in, it pushes it down through a brake line, down to the bottom here, and then your bleeder's here. So pretty much it's like bleeding of brakes on a car, and that's what I did. So I bled the brakes up here, down to here, and uh, now we have good brakes. And if you can see closely, you can see my brake... moving in and out so yeah so now i have now i have decent brakes well we'll see how decent they are after i uh try stopping for the first time i guess so now the moment you have all been waiting for i'm going to wash the sled yes i said wash the sled i'm going to clean the sled all up and make it nice and beautiful for you wonderful folks
awesome. I mean, the paint's in really good shape. The plastics are in really good shape. I was really, really dirty, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna put a, probably a wax coat on this just because, why not? I mean, if you can put lipstick on a pig, you can put lipstick on this. So uh, that's what I'm gonna get doing right now. As I can see before, uh, that I didn't see before, we got a little bit of a blemish here where somebody must have hit a tree or something. Um, not really much I can do for that. If I popped it out, I run the risk of ruining this decal. And uh, I know the decal is technically already ruined, but I think I'm just gonna leave it alone just for now. So it looks like somebody had their stickers here, but took them off. So that helps me out a lot, but you can definitely tell how white it used to be. That's a big difference there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of wax coat on this, see if it comes even more to life and uh, keep going from there. All right, well, I got the track under it. I'm just gonna go ahead and see if we can get her to move under its own power going forward. Um, so, choker. So that's good. That's good. I am absolutely done for the day. I'm tired. I'm dirty. I have work in the morning. I got it cleaned at least. I got everything pretty much put together all in two days. So you know what? Calling it a win. Calling it a win for the day. We're going to shut things down and uh, start her off fresh either tomorrow or whatever day I can get around to getting back to work on this. Okay, I lied. I uh, thought that I would, you know, uh, do this one more time. I, uh, I put the, uh, you know, exhaust on to see if it uh, sounds better. So hold on. Sounds a lot better.
Sounds good. I don't have any leaks on my uh, chain case, so I know the chain case fluid's staying in there. She's a pretty good machine. She's a little beast. So this machine is gonna be for sale when I get up to Wisconsin. I do not plan on coming back with this machine. I got the title for it when I got it for free. She's a pretty good looking sled, I think. Oh, another thing I need to find, which I think I should be able to find pretty easily, is I need some springs for uh, my exhaust there, just to keep my exhaust on. I need to button up my intake area. I got the intake box to put on that. So other than that, I say she's pretty ready to go. My dog's getting pretty tired. She's looking around for snow. Oh yeah, nice, taking a big poop. So, uh, but yeah. We're gonna keep working on her and hopefully we can get her going by the time uh, the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th rolls around. And hopefully I can get this video out before then too so I can make another one of it up in Wisconsin. As you can see here, we got her all done. She's uh, ready to go. Well, that's a lot of smoke coming out of there. So we'll let that bellow out for a second. So there she is in all her glory. She's a Cobra 440, 1978, 79. I ended up getting springs on it, ended up putting my box back on it. So she's ready to go. Maybe try and look for some hose clamps but uh, not too important. But other than that, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. So that'll do it for this episode of Golden Ruster Bus. You saw me take this thing from completely not running on a trailer with half the parts missing and uh, to running for the first time in about three decades. So like I said in the beginning, I got this thing for free, got the title, registration, everything. So this thing's gonna be going up north with me to Wisconsin. Now, if you want to check out that video, it's going to be coming up. Uh, that's the weekend of the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. We're going to be up in Wisconsin. I'm going up there with Junkyard Digs, Cars and Cameras, a couple other people, a couple other big YouTube names. And uh, I'm going to take this machine and we're going to ride it on the snow. So this machine turned into be an absolute unit. Uh, you had to do a little bit of modification, not much though, to get this thing where it needs to be to go. Um, new bearings, went through the track system. So this thing is pretty much ready to go and ready to ride up in Wisconsin. So I'd like to say thank you guys for watching my YouTube channel. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you can see more of my stuff, more of the content that I put out. If you'd like to see something different, go ahead and leave some comments down in the comment section. Uh, I definitely see that most of my viewers are people returning from uh, subscribers. 
and I really appreciate that. Thank you guys for sticking along with me and for uh, watching this video all the way to the end. Um, I would like to say go and watch my friends, Junkyard Digs, Cars and Cameras, uh, Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Vice Groups Garage, um, American Auto 20, um, Jeremy rides, he got a lot of snowmobile stuff out. And so Jeremy, if you're watching this, you want to meet us up in Wisconsin, we got, we got snowmobiles. So as always, thanks you guys for watching and keep them wrenches turning.